Okay, ladies and gentlemen, let me call this meeting to order. This is the October meeting for the Valdosta Lawrence County Zoning Board of Appeals. For those of you that have heard my speech, please bear with me. For those of you that haven't, let me tell you how we operate so you can keep up with it. I will ask or call each case by case number and case name. Staff will come to the lectern, give us the request as presented. Once they have presented it, there will possibly, probably be discussions among board members back and forth or to staff. Once we are satisfied, we understand what is being presented, and I will ask if there is anyone here in support of the request. If the applicant or someone representing the applicant is here and would like to give us additional information, please come to the lectern, give us your name and address for the record, give us the information you would like us to take under advisement. Once you have given us that information, there is a probability of discussions and or questions. Once we have decided we understand that part, then I will ask if there are any people here in support that would like to speak. If not, then I will ask for any person that is here possibly in opposition or has a question about what is being requested. Please come to the lectern, give us your name and address for the record, and give us the information you would like for us to take under advisement. Once we have heard both sides, we will attempt to render a decision here today, which is what normally happens. However, it is in the bylaws that should we feel like information is lacking or parties need to talk to resolve issues or whatever, we do have the option to postpone action until the next regularly scheduled meeting. Okay, after saying all of that, and let me turn my recorder on that I didn't turn on. <laughs> You're going to have to wing it. It's okay. The video is fine. Yeah, you can get rich in the video. Okay. <laughs> but I think it's the same thing you've heard before. Okay, first case is Lowndes County case VAR 2016-19. Eric Roush, 3470 Bemis uh, Knights Academy Road. Ms. Carmella, you have the podium or the lecture. Everyone, our first case um, before you today is case VAR 2016-19, a request by Mr. Eric Roush. Um, Mr. Roush is seeking relief to section 6.03.03 and 6.03.04 of the Unified Development Code as it pertains to the county's connection um, to water and sewer requirements. Um, as you can see on, on the slide there, um, the applicant um, is proposing to, he owns the property and he's proposing to develop it with his with this house and wants to construct the house. Um, because the property is within a thousand feet of the county's ward and sewer um, system, um, we are requiring that he connect to the system. As the, um, in regards to distance, the property lies about 300, 350 feet from the county's connection. You can probably see it um, these nights Academy Road um, and its intersection with Butler Woods Drive. That's where the nearest county ward and sewer is. And as the crows flies, it's about 250 feet, but in actuality, um, boots on the ground is about 330, 350 feet if you run along the county's right of way. With that, the staff debated um, because we want um, a return on the county's investment when it comes to infrastructure and if this property was development driven, we would definitely want them to connect. Since he's developing the property with single family residents, we debated on you know whether this is considered development driven, um, but we ultimately decided and recommended denial on the variance request um, because of the property's pro uh, proximity to the county's water sewers across the street almost is. Um, so with that, staff is recommending denial. Um, the applicant did say it um, costs as his reasons for um, the variance request. Um, this 
He's been discussed with the applicant for several years, um, and he's now at the point where he's ready to move forward and develop the property. In your staff report, he's um, provided you with some estimates. Um, he's gotten from some private contractors on some costs um, versus connection to developing the property with a individual well executive. So with that, um, I entertain any questions if you have. The applicant is here. Any questions from the board at this time? Where would the proposed house be situated on the parcel? I believe the corner is on this. Right where this property is that clear area, I believe that's where he's proposing to construct this house. And he can confirm I that. Can, I can pinpoint it uh, closer if you like. And to connect the house to the existing water and sewer, you'd have, would you have to run down the right of way and then up to the house location? And walk yeah. up the road? Yes. He would have to come down Bemis Knights Academy to his property and then go into his property. Otherwise, he would have to get an easement, if he could get an easement, through property owner that owns the land that he would be cutting across. That's correct. And that might or might not be doable, depending right. on who the property owner and what the circumstances are. It's simpler just to follow the county's right of way. I have a question. How is this zoned? It is zoned RA, Residential Agriculture, two and a half acres. Approximately how many houses may be considered for the future you know, in that particular area? With this subject property, because of the limited road frontage he has on Venus Knights Academy, um, he has about sports frontage, very lot, about He can only get a couple lots, um, only a couple, not, not very many because of the limited frontage he has on these nice cabin. Unless he builds a road there. That's cost of it. And based on this, it is approximately a 25 acre track? Yes. Um, Hold on. Yeah. I mean, it says plan of revision of 25 acre track, plan of cabin at 8, maybe. 3860, I didn't know whether that meant that it was approximately 25 acres in there or is this a small piece? And maybe that's a question that I need to ask the applicant when he comes up. It was subdivided from a larger piece in the state. Yeah. The piece acres. behind it that I'm assuming it was subdivided out of because it's the same it's name. It's 10 acres. It's 10 acres. A lot of time, he even if he were to try to subdivide it, by the time he puts a road in there to create an off-road access so that lots would be on the road, he probably could get more than two or three lots, maybe max, and max. probably two. Oh, Because he's got wetlands in there he can't disturb. I have a question about the requirement to, um, when was the subdivision made that required them to connect to the county form. In 2013. Okay. And at that time, I mean, they noted it on his survey plan that, you know, when he develops the property, he would have to connect to the county boards. So that's when this parcel was broken off from a larger parcel. Okay. Any other questions, any discussions from the board? Thank you, Carmel. Is the applicant, would you like to give us any additional additional information or is there someone who would like to speak on behalf? I'm good, thank you. Okay, I think I can clarify some of these questions that you had. Um, no, there will not be any other lots or homes developed on that lot. This is a piece of a generationally owned larger tract that my grandparents had and I requested a piece of that in order to build my personal home site and that's what this is going to be 
Now you're asking where the actual house was going to be located on this uh, can, can track. Can you walk over and sure. touch where, you, where you're planning on getting this old board to see it? That house will be located about, you know, there's a little flashing dot if you can see it, but that's pretty close to where it's going to be. Okay, so it's going to be north of the little grove of pecan trees that's in there. Right, there's some pecan trees there and a slight clearing and then uh, pine trees and such there. I'm kind of in that little clearing right here, okay? So the county lines, once I spent the money that I would be going over with you, uh, would run the uh, connections to him. I would then have to hire a private company to come in and trench to where this house is going to be on top of that, just to let you know. Uh, also, there is a creek that runs right here on this side of this property line. Yep. The, the boarding that would have to take place uh, from the utility contractor, not only would go under the road here, or wherever that, that tap in is, this is Buster Woods here, but it would also have to be bored under this creek, okay, which adds to the expense, of course, and then a tap, uh, a tap here, wherever they run it back. That's the location data. Um, the estimate that you were provided in my application uh, from, I believe it was Walker Utility uh, Plumbing, for the work on the uh, running of the county lines, the tap in, was $17,100 for the label. That does not include the, I believe it's called a K1 pump that will purchase from the county. You have to purchase that from the county. And it is of a cost of two to three thousand. So I got told that I couldn't remember if it was two or three thousand. Of course, plus the tap in, which is universally whoever taps in pays that. To get it to the front of my property and then whatever cost it would take to run it to my house. Now I also have my estimates which weren't included in that package for well septic tank installation. They're significantly lower. Um, so there's a dramatic difference of cost to have one single smaller house for me to live in. I'm on a very limited budget, what I can spend to build a house. Tapping in would cost me, it would be cost prohibitive for me to build a house out there, and I would simply just have to keep a vacant piece of land and buy an existing house for my price range, which is about $125,000 total. Um, any other questions? My, my well, here, um, this, this parcel that you have, you said, was divided out from a piece that was an inheritance, was a family piece. How, how did this come to be? This okay, my family. My grandparents owned approximately 300 something acres of land. Okay, so they owned what fronts on Bemis Knights Academy? That's they the they owned the but I mean that map is not large enough to, to portray what they actually owned. Did they own the piece in front? Pardon? Did they own that piece that is on Bemis Knights Academy in front of you? That side and the other side. Okay. Right. When, when I first was talking to my mother about obtaining a piece of land to uh, build a house, she wanted to give me 25 acres. I looked at that and I said, I don't want to deal with 25 acres. So it got reduced down to 10.91. We actually had Stan Folsom do a survey of the 25 acres. But we never carried it through. I called Stan back out and had him reduce that to run down this power line right here and reduce it. I think it wound up at 10.91 acres, actually. Okay, and this was in 2013? I think so. Okay. That, that should be the date on the deed. And Carmel, when, when was the water run within 1,000 feet of this? 
um, Crestwood subdivision was developed right in 2006, right when we adopted the ULBC. Crestwood was one of the, the first subdivisions um, after the adoption of the ULBC. Probably right before or right after. And that's when the county elected to run the board. Any other questions for the applicant? Any discussions from the board? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Is there anyone here in support of this application? Wife is here for support. I guess you're for wife. Just okay. In support. Mm -hmm. uh, anyone here in opposition, or does anyone have a question about what is being requested? Was there any contact to your office concerning this case, Carl No, sir, none. Okay, just as one point of clarification, to tap in and bring it down the county right away, does the county pay for that to his property line and no. he pays from there, or is it he pays from the tap all the way? He will pay from the tap. Okay, yeah. I just... I thought that's what it was. I want to make sure it was in the minutes correct. Okay. Any other discussions? Anybody got any questions we need to talk about? Can I entertain a motion on this request? I make a motion to grant the variance site criteria D. I have a motion from the Corman to grant the request as presented. One house. One house. One, one house, no further development on that parcel. A second. I have a second, Dr. Halvin. All in favor, please raise a hand. Unanimous, good luck with it, sir. Thank please you. Make it work. Thank you, sir. Okay, next case we'll call is Lounge VAR 2016-20, Trip Singletary, BBA, Mineola, Self Storage, Old U.S. Highway 41 North. Yes, sir, this is a request from Mr. Singletary. He's actually asking for three variances. Um, this is the property where the Mineola Mobile Home Park um, is situated currently. Um, it's been in existence for many years, uh, just south of Valwood School. Um, Mr. Singletary is proposing to create three separate lots, and I can point your attention to this site plan here that I laid before you. Um, he's proposing three lots, um, two, two lots, which will be for speculative commercial, and then the uh, one lot will be used for a mini storage or self-storage facility. And he's requesting some variances we have um, with regards to the standards for mini storage. Um, in the staff report, I've highlighted two of the standards he's requesting a variance. Uh, the first is to the maximum site area. When the UOBC was adopted in 2006, um, the consultant we used suggested that we create some standards for mini storage. And one of the standards we have is a maximum site area. And we're not sure why we have that. Um, not sure, but it's in the code. It's in the code. Um, staff just pretty much believe that they can do the correct buffering, lighting, safety features that we, to us, it doesn't matter how large that stuff is so it can be. But in this case, he's, um, the area he's proposing the, the mini storage is 6.94 acres, and the maximum site area we have in place is five acres. So he's just under two acres um, in meeting that particular standard. Additionally, we have a standard for buffers. As you can see at the north, at the top, northwest corner, is the county's fire station which is zone EA, a state agriculture, and he's required to provide for a 45-foot buffer 
uh, along the boundary of where the fire station abuts his property. He's requesting a relief. Um, staff, staff is supportive of that. Um, there is a shared driveway, actually, that the fire station and Mr. Cemetery's property will share that driveway is planned to be improved upon um, and just use as access. And we, we like that idea. There's also a row of red tips behind the fire station. You can see it fairly on, on the screen there. Um, that we ask, are you planning to keep those or remove those? And um, I believe he's planning to keep those row uh, of red tips. Then the third variance he's requesting is to the two lots that's identified as tracts number two and three. The property is located in the county's court or overlay district, and we require lots, um, newly created lots, to be a minimum of 250 feet wide. Um, and as you can see, the lots are proposed at 180. Um, Staff is supportive of that variance because the idea of the corridor overlay is to provide for interconnectivity. And as you can see on the site plan, he's doing just that. He's providing interconnectivity um, for all three of these lots. And there's actually a stub out for the lot that's located to the north of this property. So with that, staff is supportive of all three variances. We like the idea of reinvesting in, in this property. Um, and we are ready to approval to all three. Okay, and for informational purposes, it will be tied to the Dollar General on the south side so that actually if they were in Dollar General, they would not have to go to 41 to go out and come back in. That is correct. I don't mention that. You can see that on the site plan. That is correct. Okay, and should there be future development on the north side, there would still be interconnectivity between this parcel and the next parcel so that if he or the next developer, they would be able to use that to get in and out and limit the number of curb cuts on 41 North. That's the idea of the Ford Overlay. And that's a fairly large parcel to the north. It's, it's simply a field right now. Um, but it wouldn't surprise staff if that came in for rezoning for, for some development. Right. I, I just wanted to end the minutes that the board was aware that should somebody develop north of there and come back in and say, hey, we need four curb cuts for four lots, that it would at least be determined here that we are looking ahead and saying, okay, overlay and you can have two cuts or something like that depending on road frontage and not and maintain interconnectivity so that they don't have to get on 41 to go for the next group of buildings down. And also, um, he's also providing a buffer against that residential he's on property to the north. It's just the area where property abuts the fire station is where he's seeking an area. He plans to buffer the rest of the property. Right. He, he's going to meet all the other requirements except the three that's on there and that includes buffering the other the rest of the perimeter that's correct okay carmel do we know when the uh dot is going to widen the road no um from what i understand is they're still in developing stages but it's, it's more short term than it is long term carmel one why is the property being resolved from pd to general commercial Good question. The PD was put in place with the adoption of the OEC. Mobile home parks are allowed in PD zoning only, so that was the zoning that was placed on this property. Um, what he's planning to do, uh, the mini storage, as well as those other two commercial, require CG, general commercial zoning, and he's in the process of going through that, that as we speak. And staff is supportive of that CG zoning, very similar to Dollar General. So you can't do what he would do in PD? No. I mean, if he was to resubmit your master plan, he could, but it would take the same amount of time as just asking for general commercial. And because it's speculative, he doesn't know what's going there, he could probably allude to that more an idea, but it's speculative commercial.
and with the master plan is very specific. Are we premature in granting the variance before the zoning is changed because uh, I don't think so. Um, the, the 180 foot lot width is appropriate in South Canyon, um, given the other lots that exist in that area. 250, in my opinion, as zoning administrator, is, is designed for those lots on a programmable road where there's more of a flow of traffic. 41 North is different, in my opinion, um, in that there are a lot of residential development. Um, it's not that free flow of traffic as you would find on a perimeter road. Well, a after it's widened, though, will there be more free flow on that road? There will, but that's the idea of the interconnectivity. They're required to provide for a frontage road, so to speak, on these lots. Everything around there is commercial. Um, there's quite a bit of residential zoning still in this area. Quite a bit. Um, you got this little hub, and then up at the Grove Point development, there's some commercial zoning um, along there. So this is like a spot of, of zoning, and we suspect some commercial, more commercial development. Actually, behind this property is Val North property. Um, that we fill with the paving of the Stewart Circle that's going on as we speak, that will prompt more commercial development. So this this is like a hub of so many commercial development. Yeah, you got a question? Is this considered spot zoning? No, sir. Um, given the commercial zoning that's already exists, there's commercial zoning across the street from him already, and then just south of him. Um, and then there's commercial zoning to the north. I wish I would have gave you a zoning map, but not an option. If we were to grant this variance request, is he, is he bound to this site plan or can he modify this site plan? He can modify it unless um, you tie the condition the approval to this, this site plan. But he, we've been working with Mr. Singletary probably almost two years now, and He's studying the market, but wants to get the best use out of this property, and this is the, the design he finally ended up with. And it's conceptual. It's conceptual. With the painting of Stewart Circle, mm -hmm. um, will there be a back entrance? He's not proposing one at this time. Um, we did talk about that, and he can um, expound on it. He's planning, he may plan for an emergency um, exit, like keep it locked where it's, the public can't access it, but for emergency vehicles only. Any other questions, any other discussion? Thank you, Carmel. Mr. Singletary, would you like to give us some additional information? I'd be willing to answer any questions you might have. All right. Uh, any questions for Mr. Singletary? You have a question about, did you think he was going to? Did, is this pretty close to what you figure you're going to construct out there? Or do you have? Yeah, that, that's, uh, you know, the two sites on the front. Um, I'm not there, you're just kind of speculative. Um, we may. Uh, or turn them into one lot. I mean, I just don't know what may come along that may be a need for that. Um, just one option for a one acre commercial lots as far as speculative lines. Uh, but that's that's our proposal there. I mean, that's our plans going forward. I mean, and I've been to the uh, rezoning. Uh, you know, the commissioners haven't voted on it, but uh, the the uh, board, the uh, planning commission got their approval last week on, on the zone. So if I like on that fire station, the only reason we're asking for a zero buffer there is uh, to the south of that fire station there are some large roll up doors and there's a concrete pad that comes out and meets the dirt road right now. And then for the zero on the rear of the building, it is for the interconnected uh, of the two sites. It just we had to push it back another 45 feet, it would, it would 
the lot north of there, it would just be getting awful deep in that lot trying to connect and be kind of in the middle of that lot. It would make it tougher for that lot to be developed, which I don't know. But, uh, Carmel, does this have two front yards? Yes, this is considered a two lot, yes. And the speculative nature of your one or two parcels would be for a restaurant, mini mart, or what? Because I'm concerned about the parking requirements, because don't we have parking requirements based upon what's the use there? So you have to have a certain number of parking spaces in those lots right. to service whatever you're, you know, if you have retail, you have to have a certain number per square foot. If you have a restaurant, you have a different number. Right. So you're prepared for whatever your speculation is that you're going to have enough parking on a one-acre parcel? Uh, I mean, if you look probably up and down Ashley Street, Bay Tree, some of those streets, there are hardly, I mean, one acre is a pretty good size lot. Right, but this is, new lots have to follow new rules. Old lots follow old rules. So existing lots, because they're non-conforming, they can keep being non-conforming. But when you make a new lot, you have to conform to what the current rules are. Right. So when you make these new lots, what I'm trying to avoid is seeing you again. Uh, well, when you need a well, variance for... <laughs> I don't have a plan to come back, but... Uh, <laughs> Uh, or pay another fee here. Well, lots of people don't plan on coming back, but then they go, oh, but I forgot that I need less parking or a longer drive through or well, something. Whatever we have it, we do, I mean, we certainly have to need code and plan, you know, to, to get the building permit and all that. But we honestly do not have a proposed. You don't have somebody saying, oh, I'd really like to have my something on, I'm not going to the road by your next No, ma'am, not at okay. this time. I don't know if anybody but, knows we're going to do it, honestly, other than a few bucks, you know. To back up and expand on that a little bit, should you find somebody that wanted one of the two proposed tracks and the use required additional parking, do you think you could rearrange to create some more parking in there? I do. I mean, uh, I mean there's some parking that could be on the sides of those buildings uh, okay. yeah, as well, you know, or to the rear. Um, okay. Any other questions? Any other discussion? Is there anyone here, anyone else here in support of this application? Is there anything else you want to give us? Sure. No, sir. Yeah. Is anyone here in opposition to this request? Does anyone here have a question for what is being requested? Was there any contact to your office form out? No, sir. None. However, there, there was. Um couple inquiries about the rezoning. Um, just curious what's going on, but no, no opposition. Any other questions, discussions before I call the question? Can I get a motion on this request, please? If you can put any kind of boundaries, any kind of requirements, whatever you feel like is it in your mind required for this, the slate is wide open. We have I make the motion to approve all three variances as presented. I have a motion on the floor from Mr. Alvarado to grant the request as presented. No, no nothing else. Second criteria D. Right, criteria D. Second. My second. I've got second. Mr. Call, all in favor, please raise a hand. Unanimous trip. Good luck with it. All right, thank y'all very much. Please make it work. All right, we're going to try. Thank you. Okay, and now we are done with the Carmella show. Thank you. Thank you.
It is currently being developed with a neighborhood market and a gas station slash little convenience store. It's under development. The, you see three parcels there. They've been combined into one. GIS has not caught up with that combination plan. It's currently being developed. They are, they've gotten a lot of work done. The buildings are up, doing some interior work, doing some side work, things of that nature. Adjacent property, commercial, have a housing development behind. The reason this is in front of you is it was triggered by their sign application. New building, new signs. Your freestanding signs, your wall signs, canopy signs for the, the, the gas community. The back staff evaluated the application, realized that the wall signs along the front elevation, no other elevations, just the front elevation of the store, and the freestanding signs need variances. Now, with wall signs, there are two different ways you can figure the total. Usually, the one for one is what we go with. We go with the largest of the two. One for one means one square foot of sign for one foot of building elevation. Or, for buildings that are really long or really tall, 5% of the wall area. However, there is a cap. Each facade can't have more than 400 square feet. In this instance, the 5% rule gave them about 10 more square feet of signage for a total of 254.2 square feet of signs. So that's the total square footage of wall signs in the front elevation. They're requesting 321.84. So about 70, 60 square feet of them, right? Secondly, they are requesting larger freestanding signs in the form of a pole sign. One on Bemis, one on Yes Road. For single tenant freestanding signs, you're allowed one per road frontage, basically, um, at a total of 75 square feet, no taller than, 70, no taller than 24 square feet. At about 144 square feet, these are a little bit up. Now keep in mind, the 75 square feet is from what I forgot to explain since you've got a primary frontage and a secondary frontage. Tenant gets to choose which sign goes where. In this case, it would more than likely be the Beamish Road being the primary with guest being the second since guest is a, is a collector rather than an RT. Um, for primary frontage, you're looking at no larger than 74 square feet and taller than 24 square feet. For secondary, you're half that at about 37 square feet, but you can still have the same height of 24 square feet. So regardless, you're looking at a little bit bigger than what I can prove there. So they're asking for two variances. One for freestanding signage, one for wall signs along the front of the lecture. Everything else complied. Everything else meaning the pharmacy drive through elevation that complied, the gas canopy complied, as in the small convenience store signage that complied. No issues there. So just the freestanding sign, signs, just the wall signs on the front of the building. Staff evaluated the request. Unfortunately, we, we do understand the need for marketing. We do understand that tenants have packages, sign packages that they prefer, grading materials, things of that nature. Unfortunately, staff reviewed it, did not find any hardships such as topography or anything like that, and we do recommend her tonight. Any questions? In your or Matt's discussion or whoever was dealing with these people, was there any discussion about potentially foregoing secondary sign on uh, the side road and having combined footage on one sign and on the road? That did not come up, but it is a possibility. Okay. And just, just to kind of muddy the waters a little bit, if you want to call it that, they were unaware when they submitted their sign package that Nobody was aware that variances would be needed. It was beyond what staff could consider administratively, so it had to come through zoning board of appeals. 45 to 60 days, 
about $500, no guarantee of approval of anything. Explain that to the applicant. They were under the wire, come wise to get, you know, the property developed and turned over to the tenant. They chose to submit a sign permit package in the event that the various requests were not approved. The sign permit package, including all of the signs, canopy signs, convenience store signs, both freestanding signs, one on Venus, one on Yes, as well as the front elevation, met code, the application, permit application was approved, the permit was purchased, middle of last month. So in the event that this application is not approved, they do have an approved permit with code meeting signs. To move forward. Yes, sir. So they're not delayed in installing signs. On, on that approved permit, what size are these freestanding signs? What, you know what the dimensions are? Uh, I do. Hold on. There should be a graph in your package. I think it's just got the square footage rather than the dimensions. These are graphics with the dimensions of both of the freestanding signs. The top is the monument sign that's proposed for Death Road. The second page is what is proposed for Phoenix. <coughs> support or would you like to give us some more information? Yes, sir. Can I get your name and address for the record? Yes, sir. My name is Ben Carroll. I'm with a company with the developer and owner for the project, uh, Chattanooga, Tennessee, and our office address. Um, and just, uh, I guess, to elaborate on what Tracy's presented, uh, what we're applying for, what we're asking for grants for, gives us the prototypical sign package for the tenant. Uh, they try to do you know, standard signs, sizes and packages all over the country. And by and large, uh, most municipalities that we build in, they do allow the prototypical signs. We do run into scenarios like this where local codes have uh, smaller signs or less signs or whatever. So that's why we're here before you today, just trying to get what we're doing everywhere else across um, the country for the most part in Georgia. We built several stores for Walmart in Georgia. Savannah, Iceville, Wake Cross, Tifton, um, Albany, Saysboro. We've built several over the last couple of years, but then by and large, we've gotten a prototypical sign package without having the five variances. But uh, essentially, what we're asking for uh, your code allows two signs, two road signs. Uh, they're allowed to be 75 square feet and 35 square feet. We typically have a 149 square foot road sign. And uh, the road signs do have the Walmart name as well as the fuel pricing on them. So that's one reason they're, they're kind of big, I guess, uh, because you are trying to get fuel readers on there, make them large enough as you're driving a car, you can read what the fuel price sign is. Um, we, would, we would do what we're asking for is the prototypical sign size of 149 on both streets. Uh, if we were required this to move code, we are going to put the larger sign on the Venus and the smaller sign on the Yes. But uh, one of the things you had asked for, Mr. Strickland, or asked about earlier, was have you considered dropping the second road sign and just doing a larger one on the front? And that's not something that we want to do. But we want to, because the fuel center is so far away from the Yes Road, we want to have that sign on the Yes so people can see what the gas price is by having to turn in the sign back to it. It's not a problem. Just, yeah. Over the years, there have been many cases where we had similar situations, corner lots, two signs, and I always put that out, and there's been a 
great number of cases is the tenant to say, hey, if I can have a bigger yeah. sign over here, I'll forego the one over there. That's all I was trying yeah. to point out. Yeah, just the way the land lays out and the distance that the side is spread out, it just doesn't make sense in our case to try to do that. Okay. Um, Tracy did say we did go ahead and apply for a sign permit, and we did. Uh, the sign is that does meet your code, and that's again because we're nearing the completion of the project. We'll be buttoned up and done and turned up, turn the building inside over to Walmart within two and a half weeks. So it's usually right now is when we're installing signage. So we want to go ahead and get something permitted uh, so we can be you know, working on getting that stuff fabricated if we have to. Um, if we are granted a variance, we'll go back and Remanufacture some different signage. It costs us a, a week or two, but we work to get the signage that we need. So, um, the uh, building signage, uh, the only variance we're asking for there, uh, I think it's 68 square feet, is what we'd be over to get our prototypical sign. But the, the Walmart name itself, those letters are three foot six inches tall. Uh, the prototype is four foot six inches. It's just one foot larger letters just helps to read better from the road. It helps the signage to take up more of that green facade so it looks more proportional to the building. So that's what we're asking for on that. And that red 24 hour button does get a little bit bigger as well when we go to the four foot six letters. Just uh, concisely, we're asking for four foot six letters instead of three foot six and picks up square footage. Back to the road signage too. I mean, the tenant does. You know, there are scenarios like your town where uh, the signage sizes are reduced, so they do have different sign standard sign sizes that they can use. You know, so that's again why we went ahead and permitted what we did. That was actually the smallest sign that they installed anywhere, the 74 square feet it is. But uh, you know, they do have one. Like I said, the prototype is 149. They do have one that's 107 square feet, and then the, the smallest. One Actually, too, I was just noting or noticing too that on the road signs, the dimensions are nine foot tall by sixteen foot seven on the prototype, and uh, what we would have to provide for the code is six foot by twelve foot. So it's only a difference of three foot taller and four and a half feet wider. So it's not like grassing for some huge you know, monstrosity on the sign. It's just three foot taller, four, four and a half feet wider. To do both of those. Do both streets with that sign. Anything else you would like to give us at this time? That's it. Any questions concerning the signage? Anybody got any questions to ask him at this time? Any discussion? Thank you, sir. All right. Uh, being that there's no one else in the audience, I'm going to jump out and assume there's no one else in support and probably no one in opposition. So, was there any other contact to your office concerning our red and white signs? That Not a single one. When I rode out there, I, I kept looking for where to go because I kept thinking, well, it's not Walmart. It's not Walmart. Can't be. Well, it was. And, all the, and, and the signs had been laid down while they were working landscaping. Okay. But anyway, I found a fact. Sometimes they don't even move the signs to go around. So I'll go and remove the signs and grass underneath the signs about any time. Or the signs have been moved down. Right. Okay. Uh, any questions? Any discussions? I've got a comment to make. Um, the one on Bemis doesn't really seem to bother me much, but the, the one on Pence Road seems extremely large for what doesn't really seem like a major thoroughfare to me. I don't know what y'all's thoughts are on that. Yep. And, uh, and uh, again, as a semi-new member, as I stated in the earlier case, we have a complete broad open slate. If you choose to make a motion, you can pick any of that because that's just what it is. I would like to propose this. Mm -hmm. And if it fails for lack of second or whatever, then we can go back and try to get another one. Just because you're not bound to either this one or that one. 
And it, that one being the fact that they have already bought and paid for and got approved for signage that would meet everything without our approval of any kind to a mixture. Mm -hmm. you, you can say, you know, you can't have this sign, you can have a smaller sign, you can have a sign you want over here, the slate is wider. And, and the code would require, you could have a big one on Venus and then a smaller one on Venus. No, no, the code will not change. What, what we're no, saying, no, I'm saying that if, if they abide by the code, if they abide by the code, they, they, would, they would have a larger sign on Bemis, but it will be smaller than what they want. What about on Guess? Guess they will have a smaller sign than what they want, and it will be a much smaller sign. Do that, right? And that's what I'm saying. You know, if you're the one that chooses to make the motion, you can let them have anything that they've asked for. You can modify and anything they've asked for. You can mix and match and pick what you want, and if the rest of the, if somebody else, the rest of the board agrees, then that's what we will grant them, and then how they want to put it together within those parameters. We have the uh, LDR and the LDC for a reason, and we make people abide by them, so that all of our signage is consistent in our community. We don't have um, one has a big sign and one has a little sign and somebody else has a medium sign. We have, um, unless there's a real reason why they can't meet the sign variance, and sometimes we have that. We have all our signs look the same. They're all the same size. They're all within the same parameters. So, I'm afraid to make a motion. Okay. Uh, and sometimes we grant Things that they that they did not ask, but is more than what they can get regularly, but less than what they want. So I mean, it's it wider. It's wider. Sometimes we do give them more than what they can get administratively. So yes. All right. Uh, any other discussions? Any other questions? Ms. Richie, can I entertain your motion? I, I make a motion to follow staff's recommendation and deny the variance. I have a motion on the floor from Ms. Porterman to deny the request as presented. Correct? Second. I have a second from Mr. Alvarado. All in favor, please raise a hand and hold. Unanimous. Good luck with it, sir. <laughs> Is when we drive by. We don't need a bigger sign. I'm sure. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Uh, approval of the minutes. Anybody see anything that needs to be tweaked? And honestly, I will make a confession. For me, this was a hard minute pack. And part of it was telling the difference between Nathan Bradley's voice and Matt McCall's voice. I'm sorry. So if I caught you too confused, my fault. I have a motion, Mr. Alvarado, to accept the minutes as presented. Second. I have a second. Gretchen. All in favor, raise your hand. Thank you very much. Good to go. Uh, before we get to adjournment, do we have any new business, any old business, anything we need to talk about, Carmela, Tracy? I don't have anything. Just so you know, this, would have, this was the Trina's last meeting. Unfortunately, she was unable to make, to make it. Her house, she, they sold the house. They have to be out tomorrow. And she is at home packing, moving things of that nature. She sends her apologies. She's enjoyed serving. She hopes maybe one day when they calm down, she might be able to serve. Okay. Thank you and very much. Just so you know, Mr. Hogan had a death in his family. Okay, well, when you do the minutes, mark that as a excuse due to death in the family. I, I don't think there's a problem with that. And next month, Miss Nancy will come. Yeah, Miss Nancy will be back among us. I got a question. Sure. What, how big is this one? Is it huge? I think no. It's, no. it's just a grocery store. So it's quite a bit smaller. I can't tell you how many square feet. Small, it's a smaller store. Small I think I've ever seen it before. They go to the Yeah, they've got one on. Oh, no? Yeah. Oh, 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 y
It's about I mean, it's it's late and closed. Yeah. But it's business. Walmart changed their business plan. It it was a pre predecessor to this. The one that they right. build it now is different than the one they built in the late. Yeah, it's a little bit bigger. It's like Whole Foods? No. No, no. no it's no. just the grocery store side of Walmart. Um, it's about 41,000 square feet. Oh, it's just the grocery store. So it's like, right. right. It's, it's like twice the size of the uh, and I guess the dollar. Right. You, you don't have sports goods small. and furniture and there are twice the street. Oh, oh, it's oh, it's, 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 it's a lot it's longer. Like, where are there there are there 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 that, that dollar journal is on North Alaska. Oh, oh there is a Wednesday. It's pretty big inside. It's your top box. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. They're, they're trying to compete with Dollar General and whatever the other dollar store or two is, Fred's, uh, the little ones coming in on the periphery around them and were siphoning off a lot of money yeah. from the big Walmarts, so they're trying to fight back. Okay, uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you I need to make an announcement. Yes, sir. Um, next month I'm having surgery. I look like I'm going to be out of pocket for six weeks. So we're looking at both. And, uh, this time next month I'm probably not in Orlando for surgery. I'm probably not in two weeks. Now that I come back for a six week recuperation period, so I'll probably miss this summer as well. Just let you guys know. I mean, I see you after the first week. Yeah, if we understand you can't make November, but if it's such that you can make December, we will uh, we will roll you in in the wheelchair. Take as much time as you need. Okay. Uh, yeah. 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 Ladies and gentlemen, we stand adjourned. Thank you very much for your attention.